Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, friends, family, loved ones. We are so, so, so blessed to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you for joining us. All right, we have just uh, some great announcements, lots of great things going on in the life of our church, and so uh, we're just so glad you're here. If you have prayer needs or concerns, uh, please share them with us. We take them to the Lord in prayer. We're diligent to do that, happy to do that. So write on one of those cards in the center of your table and put it in the jar in the center of the table. Uh, Today is BG Kids at 2.30. And then right after that is Anchor. We got Anchor tonight from 4 to 6. We're going to have a great time. We got young adults that are ready to have fun, fellowship, games, and uh, learn. Oh, that sounds like a great opportunity. (laughs) Now, everything that's happening next week, you need to bring a program home with you because uh, right on Friday at 5 o'clock, Hey, Friday at 5 o'clock, we have our Anchor Watermarks Retreat. Yeah! We got all these young adults <laughs> going down the road and having a great time. We have, Nikki and I have so much planned for these young people. We have all kinds of games and activities and uh, stuff that they do at Watermarks. And then we have our own internal. Um, our worship team is going to be there, and Brian's speaking. And you return home, parents, you do have to come and get them Saturday at what time? Well, whatever time you want. <laughs> no, we're going to do Saturday so. at 9 o'clock. <laughs> 9 o'clock. 9 I'll o'clock. be here until 9.02. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, men, just roll over uh, Sunday morning, 8.30. You all ch- uh, chose 8.30, so in the new gate, uh, the men's breakfast, right? Men's, re- men's breakfast, 8.30, over at the new gate. Um, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time, and I promise you won't even know that I had been hanging out with uh, teenagers all weekend. Well, you'll be anointed and full of it. Energy. Yep, yep. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> and no coffee. And then on your table is a little mini invitation to Easter Jam. Last year was our first Easter Jam, and this year is our second annual. And there are just a million things going on. There's a petting zoo. There's balloon animals. There's a barrel ride. There's inflatables. There's a million things going on, uh, face painting by incredible artists, and uh, sand stuff, and digging, and it's just going to be a great, great time. So uh, invite your friends, invite somebody to Easter Jam next Sunday at 4 o'clock in the parking lot. Uh, The Easter Bunny will be there, Uh, Chick will be there. It's just going to be a great, great time to invite people and just remind people Easter is coming. So uh, join us for that next Sunday. And then our Good Friday service is the best way to prepare for Easter. It's uh, very meditative and contemplative and very, very sacred. And so uh, we have child care. It's uh, April 7th, Friday night at 7 o'clock. And so just encourage you to come. We're going to share the Lord's Supper in uh, an ancient way. And so uh, just be a part of that so that you're ready for Resurrection Sunday, for Easter Sunday. And we are just going to have an Easter celebration at 11 o'clock, whether you have uh, pre-K kids, young kids, elementary, and uh, just our service here. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful time. So make sure you join us for that. And then women, we're on for Watermark's retreat. You can sign up, ask more questions. G says she's working. Um, so uh, we're just excited for our turn to get to Watermark. So that's April 28th and 29th. So join us for that. And then Siete de Mayo is uh, May 7th, and that is a time where we just do some church cleaning around the grounds for every every part of the family of God. Y'all come, I'll give you a job, and then we celebrate after we clean our grounds and everything with a pinata and ice cream sundae. So we got a lot going on, just want you to be part of it, but you want to be part of worshiping the Lord this morning. We're so glad you, you're here, we're so glad that it's spring is coming and it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. So let's stand and say hello to someone, and let's prepare to worship God with all that we are and all that we have this morning.
come sing with me. It's like a napkin. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful gate. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Out of curiosity, has anybody started anything new that they were scared to do recently? Anybody? 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 Oh, what are you scared to do? <laughs> <laughs> so you're transitioning, yes. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, so we're opening up with fear is not my future. And I just want to say a quick thing about, you know, fear. And when June first asked me to start, I was, you know, kind of, it took me a couple of weeks to really decide. And, uh, you know, fearful to be up here, fearful to bring my, you know, self and my presence and, like, sing in front of people. And I just want to say it's really been a blessing, and I, I really appreciate June for all she's done since we've started here and, and bringing us out here and, and getting me out of my comfort zone so that I can grow. And then, you know, hopefully as a church, we'll all grow together. So uh, thank you, and uh, I appreciate it. All right, you guys ready? All right, here we go. Let them turn. done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new Death is 
This song's a really good one. I heard today we're going to be talking about this a little bit. <laughs> so that's very cool. It was not by, you know, it was by accident. So, you know, the Lord's doing something here for us. One, two, and three, and four.
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. This old wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, fire you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. You won't kick down, lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie, you won't tear down. me lost every time in a good way I just zone out and I forget everybody's here <laughs> hopefully that's all right though with you guys <laughs> all right graves to gardens uh, second track that last song just always gets me like filled up it's like filling my cup but you know with his reckless love <laughs> <laughs> the world but it couldn't fail me a man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together Is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you.
And thank you for this time of worship, Father. God, I thank you for this time to sing your praises. And better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. And Father, after we've been singing your hallelujahs for thousands of years on end, it'll be like it's day one. God, what a beautiful glimpse to sit here and sing and worship and praise your name with this group of believers and knowing that it's just a wink of what's to come. Father, we thank you for this time of love and encouragement and fellowship with one another. And God, we thank you that you are a good, good God, that you're a good, good Father. We thank you that you're not a distant caretaker and that your son, Jesus Christ, is not a motivational speaker, but you are the one true living God. And you sent your son here to set the way for us to find you, Father. God, I thank you for this congregation, for this group of believers. And Lord, as you bond us together, would you take this time to help us open our hearts, our eyes, and our minds that we may see, hear, and feel your guidance, your direction, your wisdom, and your love for us. Bless the speaker. Bless, bless the praise. Bless the offering. God, bless your children. Thank you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I know you can't sing sing that group of three songs and not have a word from the Lord um, land on you, it seems to me. I want to just enlist your spirit as we lift up people in prayer this morning. Some of you have uh, heard me talk about Diana. It's been a couple years for Diana's journey, a young girl who... um, was traumatized and uh, bladder uh, problems and had a tube uh, in Liberia. And we sent some resources for her to have surgery. She was uh, forbidden to return to her community because uh, witchcraft and those kinds of ancient thinking. And so she was um, just isolated and just because she had a tube coming out of her body. And and then they went to the uh, president of Liberia's church seeking help and intervention in their lives. Her father and her just walked around the streets of Monrovia, homeless and um, isolated, and and they they told them that they could not enter either because she had a tube. Um, She went to Ghana, got sick. It just just continued to continue to unfold poorly for little Diana's direction. Then she finally got the surgery and thought there was great success, and then she got an infection. And we've journeyed together. I've kind of given you updates, but the surgery happened and things fell apart from the inside out. And so she just um, urinates with pads, and and, uh, she just asked for prayer and hope that one day she could be normal and go to school. Uh, So those of you who uh, dis school, um, there are children all around the world that wish they could go to school. Um, We are privileged. But there's a specialist who's willing to see her this next week. So I'm just enlisting your prayers for little Diana, that God would make a way for her that she could go to school. Um, so if you have a prayer time or um, just it might land on your heart, just lift her up. I'm not sure you know that because you carry the Holy Spirit, you have power. You don't have to be just a prayer worry. You just walk with the Spirit and pray for, for someone, and there's power in that. Also, uh, Shelia, one of our preschool teachers and members here, she's sick with bronchitis, and Angie Smith just texted me, and she's down with bronchitis, and Shelly Farley continues to be plagued by bronchitis, and 
and there's a lot of all that stuff going on. So I just want to lift them up uh, this morning. Uh, Molly, a little girl we've been praying for and praying about. She's having open brain surgery. She's in our preschool, and that's going to begin in the beginning of May. So we just want to just pave the way for victory there. We're praying for uh, Kelly Vado's mom, Mary Jo, as she battles uh, cancer. And Lauren, you know we're we're in the in the gap, standing uh, for her in prayer as she battles Pott's disease. But Lauren's feeling a little stronger and um, even able to transport, uh, drive car, and get around. And she's almost afraid, she said, to say she's feeling better because. You know, the enemy tries to come in and camp out. But uh, we sang this song this morning, Fear is not my future, and heartbreak is not my home, and sickness is not God's design for us. And so um, we don't have to be afraid. And we give God the glory that Lauren is feeling better and doing better. We want to pray for the people who are just ravaged by whether it's rain or snow in our country as well. And Ukraine continues to be on our hearts, Syria and Turkey with the earthquake. And I'm sure there's many people here who uh, are in a battle, maybe a storm, whether it's your body or a relationship or um, a spiritual battle. This is a time we can pray. We can pray for what ails us, what plagues others, or your silent prayer that you lift up this morning. Prayer changes everything because Jesus changes everything. So if there's a need you have this morning, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that he'd visit you, that he'd land on you as we pray, that he'd encourage you, that he'd lift you up, that he'd bind the enemy who's just trying to trip you up, uh, slow you down, rob, steal, kill, and destroy. There's power in the name of Jesus. That's why we worship. That's why you're here. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord Jesus, may we, may we sense your presence and the sweet aroma of your spirit. Would you fill the place with your good news, your love and your mercy, your grace and forgiveness. God, we pray for strength and we pray for joy and we pray for peace that they would be tangible in our lives, that they would visit us in our bodies, in our homes, in our relationships, in our world, Lord. And across the ocean, there's a little girl who just wants to be normal, wants to be accepted. She can't just go to a hospital here, God. It's been three years. Would you please anoint the doctor that has chosen to see her and be an opportunity for healing for this little girl with a name, Diana. God, we pray that you would do an amazing miracle in this little girl's life and that we could declare that she will be returning to school. We pray for those who are sick, battling um, lung problems. Angie Smith, we lift up, and Shelia, and we pray for Shelly. These uh, teachers, Lord, (laughs) they're around sick kids, and so we just ask that you give them a covering and a repairing and and just help them to feel better because we pray. Let your Holy Spirit course through their, their bodies, God, and bring healing in the direction of their lungs and the areas they struggle this morning. We pray for little Molly who doesn't even know what awaits her with brain surgery and her parents we just lift up and we pray that you go ahead and you make that way a perfect way and that you bring her through we we just join with uh, the bottos and we pray for mary joe and just her healing in her battle with cancer once again lord we pray that you encourage her and that it would be very effective that there would be very little side effects in her direction and, and that she'd continue to run the good race set before her. Thank you, Lord, that Lauren is uh, strengthened, that she's encouraged, and uh, that she's here with us on the journey, Lord. We pray more in her direction, 
more strength, more healing, more hope ahead. We pray for our country. There's storms in the form of weather and there's other storms, Lord, that we battle. And we pray that we could once again seek and find you as a nation, as a people, that our faith would be redemptive and that you could draw us closer as we pray. We pray for Ukraine and God, we pray for a breakthrough. We pray for victory and we pray that the enemy will ultimately be bound. And for those whose lives have been ravaged and, and destroyed by the earthquake, Lord, we, we just ask that healing would come in the wings, the hearts, the hands of those you send to help restore and repair all that's been lost and broken. May your spirit be abound in those countries, God, and may people seek the Lord and seek the kingdom and watch how everything else will be added bit by bit. Right now, Lord, you know what we, we brought in today. You know who is on our heart. And we would ask, Holy Spirit, for you to respond to our need in a way we could see, feel, or hear. That when we leave, that we've been changed, that something's changed because our God, who's an awesome God, a good God, a God who loves us even unto death. Lord Jesus, thank you that you hear us, that you care, that you love us. We lift up our prayers to the kingdom of God, to the throne room of grace, and we pray your mercy in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, many of you have uh, gotten a cup for the Lenten season for our offering that you bring on Easter morning because we are just convinced that as a people across the planet that we will see the end to human trafficking in our lifetime. So we join with A21. And this is just a snippet and encouragement and a challenge to fill my cup and bring it in. A21 is a global anti-human trafficking NGO and our mission is to abolish slavery everywhere, forever. We believe that's possible, that we could see the end of human trafficking. When we all are willing to stand up and say, that's wrong and I'm willing to do something about it, that's where this radical hope stems from, is that not only is change possible, but that we all get to be part of the solution. Human trafficking is a global issue and it is happening in every single country all across the world. Here in Cambodia, we see a lot of people that are trafficked coming from vulnerable backgrounds. So mostly coming from poverty or lack of job opportunities. We are working predominantly with child survivors of human trafficking. What we're seeing in Texas is trafficking can really take on two different forms. We have one, it's happening to children and adults. We're seeing a lot of trafficking happening either out on the streets. It's also happening businesses that we pass by every day. We need everybody to join. We need everybody to be educated about human trafficking. And when we work together to fight against human trafficking, it's possible that we can abolish that issue from the globe. We all play a part in the solution because although there are 50 million people currently being enslaved around the world, there are so many more of us outside of that problem. And when we know what to look for, when we understand the signs and have educated ourselves about what it can look like, then we get to be part of the solution. We cannot do this without your support. And your support, I really mean a lot to us, not only the organization, but to the vulnerable people, especially the children. I am so excited about Life Church partnering with A21. You are helping to support victims um, out of trafficking, survivors to be restored, and I just want you to know that your giving is having such an impact on so many people's lives, and we are so grateful for your support. Good morning, John. Have a word for us this morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are feeling good today. Um, this week, 
I uh, had a hard time trying to come up with something to share. Um, I thought about talking about the change of season since spring is officially starting this week, but it just didn't feel right. I'm sure I could have pulled something together, but I think when June asked me to do this a few years ago, she wanted me to be real and honest, so here you go. Um, uh -oh. I think I mentioned that I have been trying to re keep up with the word for today recently, um, which is something new for me. So on Tuesday, I read it, and it really hit home for me. Um, it was really convicting. It stated that new ideas are delicate um, and a blessing, and one frown or negative comment can crush it before we even s uh, have a chance to see if it works. So immediately I thought, that's me. Uh, I usually start from a place of no, and then it takes a lot of work and convincing to get me to yes, and that's not really not fair. New ideas should be met with an open heart and mind, followed by real discernment, not just no. So I immediately texted Stacy, even though she was like, around the corner, and told her that I'm so sorry for doing that to her for all these years. You see, Stacy, she's the big idea person and the big thinker in our house. She does the research and she always has what's best for our family in mind. Um, and as I thought more about this, I could remember times when we were talking and she would bring up an idea, but in the blink of an eye, she would shut it down because of my initial reaction. Um, those ideas were wasted, I guess. I wondered what might have we missed out on because of my negativity. So I want to share that with you all today because you don't want to wait until you're 52 years old to figure this out. If you're like me and usually start it now, it's time to change and believe in the potential of dreams and big ideas. If you're a big thinker or a dreamer, um, please keep doing what you're doing and push back against any negativity you might face. Uh, either way, as the passion said, change your thinking, change your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Thank you for this beautiful morning, this church full of followers, and all the blessings you continue to pour out to us. Father, thank you for planting new, new and bold ideas in each one of us. We know that this is one way that you move your plans for us forward. Today, I pray that you help me and other folks that might think in a similar way to have uh, open hearts and minds to new big ideas. This broken world has made it uh, being negative so easy, but we don't want to miss out on what you have planned for us. Father, I also pray for the creative thinkers. Please continue to bless them and provide the courage and strength they need to continue to voice their ideas and stand against any negativity that they may face. I believe that we definitely need new bold ideas to fight against the darkness and evil that's going on in this world right now. Father, thank you for today's offering. Please bless it and please provide new big ideas for us to use to bring you glory and expand your kingdom. Thank you, Father. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, I think Natalie Grant and uh, Curtis Partouche and and luckily, no luck, but living under Christ's kindness, um, June, we all got the same message from the Holy Spirit this morning. I love that song. It's uh, one of her newest songs. Do you know there's exactly 20 days remaining in the season of Lent? So if you've sacrificed something or given up something, you're halfway there. Chocolate awaits me on Easter morning. Anybody give up something or sacrifice something? Followed through on that? 20 days, you're halfway there. And if you've not even begun to fill up your cup, Uh, to end human trafficking and bring on Easter morning, you've got 20 days left to do it. If you're a parent or a child in school or a student going to school or a school teacher, I'm guessing the days you're counting down are the days until what? Summer! Not summer. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right? Spring break. Does anybody know how many days? No, days. It's 12 days. On this halfway through Lent Sunday, all right, leave spring break, come back to me. Um, on, On this halfway through Lent Sunday, we're continuing our message series that's called In His Steps. And today's sermon is titled, Blessings on the Way. Life's greatest struggles, pain, sickness, loss, trauma, are compounded when we face them alone. These struggles, however, are transformed with someone by your side. While the struggle does not go away, having another person to abide with you makes it bearable. Whatever struggles you are facing right now, remember that Jesus has promised to abide with you always. Did you know that nearly all mammals have external ears? Whether it's an elephant or a deer. My deers are back by the deers. My deer are back by the way. I they don't they have been gone all winter. Anyway, uh, whether you're talking about an elephant, a deer, or a bear, they all have external ears that stick out, flop down, or protrude from their head. There's something that every mammal has in common. However, mammals do not use their ears in all the same way. Take a dog, for instance. A dog will listen to anyone or anything. All, all you have to do is say to it, here, boy, here, boy, and, and the dog comes, especially, especially if there's a prospect of a treat or food. Cats, on the other hand, <laughs> listen to nobody but themselves. Uh, a cat will walk right past the owner if it wants to, to be certain the cat hears you calling, but if it chooses to listen uh, to nobody but itself, it, it can just saunter, strut by you at that moment and hear you calling to them, but they can walk right past you and think you're just invisible. Now, sheep are different from both cats and dogs. While a dog will listen to anyone and a cat will listen to no one but itself, Sheep will listen only to the shepherd. Sheep have their ears tuned into the one trusted voice. Every other voice may spell danger, but the voice of the shepherd is the voice of truth and safety and care. God tells us he is our shepherd. And David, the shepherd boy, who one day will kill the the giant called uh, Goliath, and become the second king of Israel, he knows this to be true. And his 23rd psalm or song that he wrote helps us to know that too. Let's read Psalm 23 this morning on the screen or your phone or if you brought a Bible this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness, right paths for his 
namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. When do you usually hear that psalm? Is it familiar? You know it? Where do you usually hear that? At a funeral, right? Well, when we join Jesus on this journey and we begin to try to continue to walk with him or walk with him for the first time in his steps, I want to point out this morning six blessings along the way. And the first one is the blessing of being carried. When Jesus began his ministry, he declared that he is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. And Jesus tells us in the book of John, in the gospel of John, the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Sheep meander and they they stray off. They get separated from the flock easily. Easily distracted. In the 23rd Psalm, the the Lord leads us. He leads his sheep to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside quiet waters. The Lord restores our lives and leads us in paths and tries to lead and guide and call us into paths of righteousness for his name's sake, but for our blessing as well. In Luke 15.5, Jesus, the good shepherd, leaves the 99 to retrieve one lost sheep. And when he does, he carries that sheep home. He lays it on his shoulders and he rejoices because the one who's lost is now found. He left the crowd. He left for the one. And we on this journey, he comes after us one by one. He knows our name. He calls us. He speaks in unusual ways sometimes, maybe in the earthquake, maybe in the still small voice, but he's always speaking, always reaching out in our direction. When he, we follow Jesus, he will lead and he'll guide us, and he carries us. He carried his cross to Calvary so he can carry us safely into his kingdom. We are carried the second blessing is treasure we you and i if we follow jesus we have treasure before there were banks when war or instability threatened the land the ancient people would stash their treasures in jars of clay and bury them in the ground today archaeologists often dig up these treasures in jars of clay 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, We have this treasure. Paul writes to the church, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show the extraordinary power may be from God and not from ourselves. God plants a treasure, gives us a treasure. It's God's power, not us, that we should boast, but he gives us a treasure in this jar of clay. We're just, jars of clay. God has placed his treasure in us, though. I don't know if you ever feel like you're a treasure. Sometimes uh, somebody who loves you, you're such a treasure. But we are. We have a treasure. We have a treasure through faith in Jesus Christ. God has filled us with the riches of his loving kindness. The good news inside of us may not be flashy, but it's priceless. Priceless. When we walk in his steps, we can spill his treasure out along the way. And this treasure does have power. And that power is Jesus. The third treasure is God abides. God abides with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the good shepherd, he's with us. 
when our strength fails, when others fail, Jesus abides. He doesn't leave us. He's always with us. He'll never forsake us. If we walk in his steps and abide in his love, he says he abides in us. He makes his home with us. And there's comfort and peace and rest and blessing, knowing that God abides. God rests in us, with us. The fourth blessing is condemnation is canceled. In 1789, John Adams called the U.S. Senate to order with a gavel. Through the years, the gavel has been a symbol of authority and finality. When a judge drops the gavel, the final decision has been made. Paul writes to the church in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. There is now, some of you know this by heart, what? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What good news. The world may try and condemn us. We might try to condemn ourselves. We're good at that. But there is now, if you believe and follow Jesus, uh, condemnation is canceled. Bam! <laughs> the gavel is dropped. Judgments about those who follow Christ are nullified. They're null and void. You're not unlovable. You're not flawed. You're not rejected. You're not wor worthless or stupid or hopeless or a failure. You're not. You're not because you're his. Jesus says whoever believes in him are not condemned. He gets the final word. He's the final authority. Jesus tells us, we're forgiven, we're loved, and we're chosen. Jesus says, whoever says they can condemn us, forget about them. Forget about them. <laughs> Stop doing it yourself already. Come, believe it, and receive it. Really, that sounds so easy. But come and believe it and receive it. It's such a better way to think and feel and live. Number five, the blessing he gives us along the way is grace. It's a free gift. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. By grace you've been saved through faith. And this isn't your own doing. It's a gift of God, not a result of work. So nobody gets to brag or boast. God's grace, God saving us by the mere act of believing in him is a gift that's sometimes hard to open, hard to believe, hard to receive. And some of us think we have to measure up or clean ourselves up or earn it. Or some of us, we just reject it. We pass it by. It seems too good to be true. Really? Really? In a world of intellectualism and and just uh, uh, so many messages and voices, it, it's hard for us to believe, to fathom it could be a free gift. That's the crazy thing about the cross. Jesus proved to the world that he meant it. I got to ask, who would volunteer to go to such great lengths, to suffer, be punished, humiliated, stripped, beaten, whipped, Jesus was willing to go to the extremes, crucified on a cross, that the world might take notice, that all might believe this reckless love and receive his gift of grace. Arms wide open. The blessing of his grace in our direction is priceless. And the last blessing, not the really the last, the sixth blessing I want to point out is living hope. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he's caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I can't even not think of uh, 
Phil Wickham's song when I read that scripture. I was going to sing it, but I won't. But my God, my living hope. You know that song? Jesus Christ, my living hope. When you get serious, when, when you get serious, and serious as a child looks different, serious as a student, serious as a young adult, serious as a young family, uh, father or mother, serious as uh, 50, they, they all, 60, 70, 80, it looks different. Getting serious, walking in steps looks different for each one of us. But when you get serious about walking in his steps, you walk with a living hope. You can tune into that, not be aware of it, or, or just be so sensitive to it. You have hope. You're not a pessimist. You're not hoping in what the world has, the treasure the world has. But you have this living hope. He gave it to you in the treasure, in the Holy Spirit. You have a living hope that looms larger than any of life's troubles, death or disease, hardship or hurt. His living hope is greater than that. Last week, if you were here, it was the first time ever I uh, remember talking about being a nurse in my licensed home health company I work for. And, and I have to tell you that this week, <laughs> I went to admit a client again. And they live here in Palmyra, and I know her very well. I went to the same church as she went for years. So I was like, oh, God's got an uh, opportunity Again, for me, this woman is now widowed and she lives alone. Her children are very far away, far emotionally, spiritually, and in terms of distance. And she's over 90 years old now. She got hurt and she needed some help um, at home, so I sat with her. I learned from the week before, I sat with her for a spell I listened and also tried to support and encourage her. Her heart was so heavy. She's lonely and she's sad. She felt like uh, life was harder every single day. And then she said she wished she could just go to bed and pass away gently and quietly. And I tried to keep my eyes from popping out of my head. And I didn't dare say that's exactly what happened to the woman I admitted last week. The client died, if you weren't here, she died a few hours after I left her, after the Lord told me to spend lots of time with her. I just tried to bless her by reminding her that Jesus will carry her, that she has a treasure still in that jar of clay, that Jesus will abide and she is not alone. She let me pray with her and ask Jesus to remind her how she's loved and valuable. And I ask for his grace to help her to carry on, that this living hope will sustain her here and now and when he takes her home. She's lived a good life. She's lived a faithful life. She's endured her share of trials and loss and suffering. But at 90-something, she still has this living hope. She's ready to leave now and go home to see the one who gave his life for her. She's lived with Jesus as her living hope, and she's ready to leave this life because Jesus is still her living hope. When we receive the blessing of Jesus Christ as our living hope, whether we're 14, 24, 34, 46, 52, 60, 90 something, we can live and die with this hope that helps us to live and die. Jesus is a shepherd. He wants to carry us. He wants to give us treasure. He abides with us. 
He cancels any condemnation and gives us grace and helps us live with hope. He's the one we need to follow all the days of our lives. Let us pray. Good shepherd, you know that our ears are often turned and tuned on the wrong voices. You know that we're prone to listen to a million voices other than yours. And you know that we're prone to listen to ourselves and not you. This morning, turn our ears to you and your voice. Speak words of truth and hope and love to us. Jesus, help us to walk in this newness of life that only comes through you. Let us hear your voice as you give us so many blessings along the way. We pray not to neglect or overlook these gifts. And as the days of Easter draw closer, may we find ourselves using these blessings with one another, someone you intend for us to touch with some good news. Jesus, would your voice be ever clearer to us this week as we live and share the living hope inside of us, we pray. Amen. So as we, the best part of the, the end of the service is an invitation. Jesus invites us to listen, respond. You don't have to come up and, and do that with praying but you can please respond to what he's speaking to each one of us that you wouldn't miss a blessing or the moment of this adventure this journey with him especially during the season of Lent the cross looms in the distance and he's traveling because of his love for us. If you need prayer this morning, if you need a little bit more of Jesus, if you need a living hope, we'd love to pray in your direction. But let's respond to him in some way as we worship him and end this day in Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of the spirit of the living God falls afresh on us this morning, that we are refreshed, we're renewed because of his word, because of his truth, and because of his promises, and because you're full of treasure. 
You may be a jar of clay, but you are powerful because of the one who lives in you, the one who abides in you. I pray you're encouraged today. I pray you're empowered today. I pray that healing visits you today, that the strength of his spirit would strengthen you in your body, in your mind, in your way of thinking, feeling, and living. I pray that you would feel the presence of God and be guided by him that you would see someone in your path this week that you can bless, that needs a blessing. Let's go and believe that with Jesus Christ, all things are possible. All things are possible. Let's live that out, I pray today. God bless you and may you receive his blessings along the way. In Jesus, we declare this. Amen. Amen.